Hi, I'm Stephen and welcome to Audio Nautica. You've probably heard the saying, there's an app for that. So the question is, is can you use an iPad or an iDevice as a function generator? As you can see, I've got a function generator app on my iPad and indeed if you've watched some of my other videos, you'll see that I often use this function generator app just to generate a sine wave for testing uh, an amplifier. So I have it hooked up to my scope and if I turn on the sine wave, so we can see that we seem to get a nice clean sine wave out of our function generator app. Now there are a few caveats with that. Main one is to do with impedance control. Um, out of a signal generator, we'd normally have 50 ohm output impedance, but coming out of this iPad, who knows what it is? It's designed to drive a pair of uh, headphones. So we don't have um, determinative output impedance. But also let's have a look at what happens when we go to, for example, a square wave. We immediately see that we have a heap of ringing on our square wave. Now, you might be inclined to think that that is because of an impedance mismatch. I don't believe so. This frequency, this is a one kilohertz sine wave, and we can get an idea if we change the frequency, and have, just have a little look at what's going on here. Even if we drop the frequency, you can still see that these, these sinusoidal elements, but then the higher in frequency we go, the worse it gets. Now we're still only at four kilohertz, so this is, you know, we're nowhere near RF. I'll just change the time base a little bit. So we see that this signal just really looks pretty catastrophic, and now it looks like a sine wave. It's actually supposed to be a square wave. And I have a bit of a theory as to what, why this is the case. A, sign, a, a periodical square wave is a sum of sine waves. Now, remember that this function generator is in this iPad is for audio frequency only. So, I suspect that what is happening is it just isn't capable of generating all of the frequencies that are needed to actually create the square wave. Now, that might be a hardware limitation, it could even be a software limitation uh, based on the, the, how the audio software in this iPad works. All a bit academic. The point is, is that our square wave does not look anything like a square wave. So we'll go back to, I'll just dial in one kilohertz as our frequency again. Turn the output on. So there's our sine wave, there's our square wave. That's sawtooth, which is not too bad. And we see that that doesn't look brilliant, that one. But yeah, the worst one is the square wave. Now, I also have connected up a Tektronix function generator, which is on channel two. So if I turn that one on, I'll just change the trigger so that we're triggering on that one. I might just turn that off so it's easier to see. We can see there we have a one kilohertz square wave. So that's what our square wave should look like. We can see there's no ringing at all. Okay, so just discovered that this Tektronix 2247A scope can measure rise and fall time. So this is measuring the rise time of the iPad function generator. And it's telling me that it's 470 microseconds, basically. Now, if I change to channel 2, so uh, set measurement channel, channel 2. Go to channel 2, 82 nanoseconds, 83 nanoseconds. 
Okay, so here we are back on the iPad. So really the answer to our question is, can you use an iPad as a function generator? Well, for square wave, not really, but for sine wave, yes, it's quite handy for a sine wave generator, uh, if you want to use it for that. So that's the answer to our question. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've got a Patreon. If you want to support my channel and see more videos like this, you can do that at Patreon. I'm on Instagram as well. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me a like if you enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye for now.